So a little while ago, Chose Fox reached out to me asking if I want to check out their Calgary 16 macro pad and their Mini Peg 48 ortholinear keyboard. Now, this is actually a collaboration between Sporo, who designed the boards, and then Chose Fox is just distributing them. But they're basically really low profile chalk boards that use 16 by 16 millimeter spacing instead of the usual like 18 by 17 or 18 by 18 millimeter. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dive in and we'll take a look and go from there. So this is what Chose Fox sent me. It's a carrying case and then inside of this is a keyboard and a macro pad. Basically your options to buy this are either the keyboard on its own, the macro pad on its own, the carrying case on its own, or buy everything together as one big bundle. I have everything as one big bundle here. So what we're going to do is just open this up and it is a very nice zippered case. It's actually a pretty good quality case here. And we have the keyboard here, the macro pad here, and then up top we have a bunch of velvet bags here. So we have the one the keyboard would come in if you didn't buy the carrying case and then the macro pad. And then also we have this baggie with a baggie inside of it that is the rotary encoder for the macro pad. Now, this is pretty cool because the macro pad, you can do stuff like volume or switching apps, although I don't really do much with encoders. It's kind of cool that it is on this though. And it is fully QMK compatible with Vile support instead of Via because Via is pretty bad. Vial is pretty good, so that's nice that they have that. Now we're first going to start by looking at the keyboard. So let's pop that onto the foam bottom here and then put this off to the side for now. So if we just start looking at the board here, you can see that it is all hot swappable here. And we will take the PCB out in a moment to confirm that and take a look at everything on it because I like taking stuff apart to look at it deeper. Although I don't anticipate there really being much with this as a PCB and an aluminum housing. But up top we have a USB-C port. And then around the back, we have a bunch of fingerprints because I've looked at this a few times, a reset button here. And this is either anodized or powder coated. I'm not sure exactly, but it is a matte black finish that, like I said, is pretty fingerprinty here. And then we have the black feet to match. We have the Chose Fox Fox on the bottom there. Right there, we have the Chose Fox Fox. And then we also have a text Chose Fox logo right there. So what I'm going to do now is just open this up. And all there is is there's just four screws, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So I'm just going to take a Phillips screwdriver and pop those out really quick. Now once you get those out, all you do is you just grab the PCB and you can just pop it out like so. And the one thing I noticed when I took this apart the first time that's kind of interesting is that the case here uses four screw points, right? And then it uses these like standoff things, these like fake standoffs to sit on the PCB so it doesn't flex on the edges, which is kind of smart how they did that. So there's just these little ones here and then the four screws, but that's the case. Now we'll take a look at the PCB and you can see it is all hot swap on the bottom. There's that reset button right there. And then it is the, the board of all time. And then it is the V0.0 .0 by Sporo. So really not much to look at here. I mean, decent soldering. I'm assuming it's just a machine solder. I mean, someone's probably not soldering all these when they put them together. So pretty simple. We have our little chip here and that's basically it. So we're just going to put this back in the case here. We'll grab our screws and put them back in. And that's the keyboard back together. Now, this is a 4x12 ortholinear layout, so really nothing too special in terms of the layout. But like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, what's special about this is that 16x16 16 16 millimeter spacing. That's why this board basically fits in my hand like that. Because if you think about it, normal 18x17 millimeter spacing, there's two more millimeters. So 2 times 12, that's like 24 millimeters across the entire 12 grid layout. So you're looking at like two and a half centimeters more there. So basically, if this was a regular space board, it'd probably come out to about there. So, you know, you're kind of cutting that off by doing that 16 millimeter spacing. But I'm just going to put this off to the side now. I'm going to grab my case again, and we're going to look at the macro pad next. I'm also going to grab my knob because we have to solder that on. I'm just going to grab this here and the macro pad yet again, just like the keyboard. Chose Fox logo in the middle this time, whereas this one is on the bottom. So you can see something I'm just noticing now is that, I don't know, I probably would have rather had that in the middle. That might have made a little bit more sense, but that's just how it is. But that's on the bottom there. Fox logo, very similar design. I mean, they're designed to work kind of like that where they work together or like that. Both of them are USB-C, so this is still USB-C. And then the encoder goes right in the top right there. So what we have to do for this before we go any further with doing anything else, because I'm going to assemble these at the same time, they are just hot swaps. So we basically pop the switches in. What I'm going to do is actually pop this PCB out really quick. Pop out that PCB. And what I want to do is solder in the encoder on the top right. So I don't know if it exists anywhere. There are, to my knowledge, no hot swap encoders. So we do have to solder that in. But you can also just put a switch there if you don't want to use the encoder. So it's really up to you. You have those options. But all you do is you basically pop the encoder. And I'm just going to do it really quick. I'm going to grab my encoder. I'm going to open it up, pop it out. It does come with a nice black knob on it too, which is pretty nice. You can do that. You can also customize these knobs. I mean, it's pretty standard fitting. So if you want to get like something different, like a resin knob or something, you can just pop those on there. I'm just going to grab the encoder and you'll see that there's just the pins on there and basically you just align the encoder with the pins. I have a bent pin on there. I have to bend that back really quick. You just grab it 
you put it like this you just push down there we go that is now popped in there and you want to kind of bend those tabs on the edges so it actually clicks in and then it will hold it into place so these tabs on the edges here you want to make sure they go in but they'll basically just pop in there and then we just have to solder on the pins here so there's one here three up top and then one on the right so i'm going to do that really quick see I soldered all the pins on we have three up top and then there's one here and one there now these side pins you don't actually have to solder those on I don't believe they're just kind of locating and holding pins they hold it in place but these ones are for the switch I believe and then up top are the actual rotary encoding function so I think one's left and then one's right but basically that's on there now it also has a press so you can press it to get a keystroke there too if you want but all I'm gonna do is put that down now I'm gonna grab my case and then put this back in here so you just slot it in Grab our screws. Then all we want to do is take our knob, put it on, and we have an encoder there. So at this point, all I have to do is put my switches into the boards. And like I said, they're hot swaps, so it's super simple. You just pop them in, no soldering or anything there. So I'm going to grab both of these, and I'm going to be using these chalk robins, which I thought would be nice. They're clicky, so they're pretty nice switches. I really enjoy these. They're actually my favorite chalk switches out of all of them. They feel the most sturdy out of chalk switches, basically. Like the linear ones are kind of a little wobbly. These robins are really good. So I'm just going to grab these and put them into the boards really quick. And then we'll look at the keycaps because those are also from Charles Fox but they're the 16 by 16 millimeter space ones, which is actually a Chose Fox exclusive. So it's kind of limiting your keycap choices a little bit to basically only the Chose Fox ones, but I think, I think it's worth it because they look really cool. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna put the switches in. I'll be back in a moment. So you can see that I have the keyboard here with all the robins in it, and I realized halfway through that I didn't have enough robins to complete the macro pads, so you probably saw me pop them out of here and then pop them into here. But that also made me realize something at the time that my robins are probably a bad batch of them because the tolerance on the pins themselves was very, very tight to get into the board, and you probably saw I broke like a ton of pins levering them out because I had to like pry them out of the board basically. What I could have done is pop the PCB on and then push them from the back, but I was too lazy to do that, so I just rather would break a few of the pins off here which isn't really a big deal I mean they still sit in there they're fine but it made me realize when I was putting the reds in just how tight these robins actually were because we could just grab this and it pops right out like you'd expect a hot swap switch to pop out so not the keyboard's fault it's my switch's fault but that also brings up another topic I want to talk about here is that on this it has these locating pins obviously for the pins on the switch so if we take the switch here you can see on the sides there's those locating pins that would go in there and they got the tolerances perfect on those because on chalkboards they don't have a plate so there's no plate to hold the switches in place so you need those locating pins to be the proper tolerance if they're too loose the switch will wobble around and if they're too tight the switch won't go in so these are perfect on here which is good to see we can just take the switch and pop it in here that's in there we have both the boards here like so and now what we're going to do is take a look at the keycaps because that's really where this board starts to differ from any other 4x12 ortholinear board i mean this isn't a unique board here, right? This is just a four by 12 or the linear board, but what makes it unique is that 16 by 16 spacing instead of the normal 18 by 18 or 18 by 17 that chalkboards use. So here we have the keycaps. We have the English legends with the Japanese lighter gray sub legends there. And then below we have a bunch of symbols and like number pad stuff for the macro pad. And what I actually wanna do is compare these to a normal 18 by 18 keycap. This is just a 3D printed one, but it is 18 by 18 dimensions. So we pop open here and grab a keycap. Actually, I'm gonna grab one with tech. You can see there's the text on it. It's really sharp text. It feels pretty dense. It is also scooped. When we put these next to one another, you can see how small it is in comparison. So super small, basically shaving off about two millimeters per keycap. And I think that will look pretty nice on them. So what I'm going to do is just put them on the board. I'll be back once that's done. So there are all the keycaps on the board there. And one thing is that there were a lot of options for keycaps. I mean, I have a lot left over here, which is a good thing. But for me, I'm indecisive. So it took a little bit of trial and error to find which ones I like. But I like like these smiley face and stuff in the middle. And they're very high quality keycaps. I'm actually pretty impressed with these. They're very nice. But that's what I got on the keyboard here. And you're probably noticing that I have the legends on the outside there. So I sit like this for home row. And that's one thing I wanted to mention about this board is that it's so tiny that ergonomics are kind of an issue. If you sit on the normal position here of home row, you're kind of cramped. So by putting them out there, it's a little bit better. And really, you're not going to buy a board like this for ergonomics. It's really just because of how tiny this thing is. I mean, actually, kind of funny enough, 
Banana for scale. There we go. Actual banana for scale. Look how small that thing is. I mean, it's it's a tiny board, and I really like that. It's really cool, and I think it looks really, really clean. Here's the macro pad as a side note. There's your mini typing test on that. This thing's small. Like I said, <laughs> banana for scale. I find that hilarious, but it looks really good, and I think with the outer legends like that i'm pretty happy with it so we'll go do a typing test on it we'll talk a little bit more about it and that's what i got so let's go type on it So there is the Mini Peg 48, fully completed, fully assembled. I think it looks really nice. I'm very happy with how it came out. I'm very impressed with these keycaps from Chose Fox. They feel really high quality. I mean, like I've mentioned a few times, those legends are like, they're like tack sharp. They're really nice on there. I'm really impressed with them. And there is the Calgary 16 with the rotary encoder, which I don't know if you can hear this. I mean, it has a very nice like tactile feel to it. I'm very happy with the encoder too, but everything looks nice on there. And the one thing that people will mention on this that I just wanted to kind of cover right now because I know someone will mention is that yes, these are expensive. If you're not new to the keyboard world, you know that custom keyboards are expensive because we have to cover the profit for the creator. Of course, the parts and components in, I mean, PCB is pre-assembled like this. You basically have to pay to get them assembled. So they're pretty expensive to do that too. But also this is an aluminum housing. So that's not cheap in itself. I mean, even in bulk orders, that's not cheap. So I think the price for these is pretty fair for what they're charging because it does feel really high quality. I'm actually very impressed with this board. But if you don't wanna buy one, there is a chance that you can win one because they sent me one completely for free. A full set of the keycaps I have, the same keycaps, a Calgary 16 and then a Mini Peg 48 here. So a full set of this that I will be giving away. All you need to provide are the keycaps when you do get it or the switches when you get it. And the way you can enter that is I will have a link and a pinned comment and the description for a giveaway over on my Discord server because that's kind of the easiest way for me to do this. It's just a bot that runs. You'll basically join there. You'll click a button and then in two weeks, I'll pick a winner on there, get some info from you and then ship it off. Now, this is only in the US if you're international. I'm sorry because it's pretty expensive to ship internationally. But you will have a chance in two weeks to win that if you enter that giveaway. So I'll link the info to that down below. Other than that, that's the Mini Peg 48 right there. That is the Calgary 16. Very happy those kind of sit on your desk like that. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. I'll see you next time.